This is Dr. Michael Marchetti. Let's talk about small congenital nevi. The congenital melanocytic nevus is considered a clustering of benign nevo melanocytes in the skin whose presence is determined in utero and is visible at birth or appears within the first two to three years of life. The most important classification determinant of congenital nevi is that projected absolute size, the longest diameter. For the purposes of this talk, we'll focus primarily on small congenital nevi, which are considered less than or equal to 1.5 centimeters. There are other criteria that are useful and important for categorizing congenital nevi, such as the location on the body, the presence of satellites, the color, rugosity, nodularity, or hypertrichosis present in the lesion. What about the clinical appearance of congenital nevi? We know they can appear with hypertrichosis, so thickened terminal hairs. They may have a mammillated surface. Often they have sharp borders and they're larger than the other lesions on the body. As a general rule, small and medium congenital nevi are more uniform in their clinical and dermoscopic pattern than those that are large or giant congenital nevi, which are frequently heterogeneous and have multiple clinical and or dermoscopic patterns. The principal dermoscopic patterns in congenital nevi include reticular, globular, reticular globular, diffuse brown structureless pigmentation, sometimes with remnant globules and network, and the multi-component pattern. The reticular pattern. Here we have a classic exa example of a congenital nevus. We see these brown lines that form a grid-like pattern with these hypopigmented holes. This is a reticular pattern, symmetric and uniform throughout the entire lesion. A variation of the reticular pattern is the hyphal-like pattern. This is when we see branching network fragments as opposed to a well-formed network. This is also suggestive of a congenital origin. Another example of these branching network hyphal-like fragments. The second pattern, globular pattern, characterized as brown, blue, or black rounded structures known as globules. Here we have a beautiful example of a globular pattern throughout the lesion. Another example, brown, round structures, these globules, larger bluish globules present as well. Sometimes those globules can have an angulated appearance. This is known as a cobblestone appearance. Cobblestone globules also suggestive of a, of a congenital origin. Another example of these angulated brown globules, the cobblestone globule. The reticular globular pattern most frequently is seen with peripheral network and central globules, such as this example. Another example of a beautiful small congenital nevus, peripheral network, and in the center we see brown small globules. Another example, predominantly reticular pattern, but in the center we see a small collection of cobblestone globules. The next pattern is diffuse brown structureless pigmentation. So the predominance of the lesion will show structureless brown pigmentation, but you may see a few remnants of network or globules. In this example, predominantly structureless brown pigmentation with a few globules interspersed in the lesion. Another example, brown structureless pigmentation. The final pattern is the multi-component pattern. This is when we see many different dermoscopic structures and clinically and dermoscopically it's often raising the differential diagnosis for melanoma. Let's take a closer look at this lesion. We see cobblestone globules. We see black dots, brown dots, atypical blotch, milli-like cysts, and network. Many different structures. Without knowing this was present at birth and had um, a long-standing history of stability, this would be a lesion coming off to rule out melanoma. This is well published in the literature. Here's a publication from 2005, the author's report several different congenital nevi, all of them very clinically and dermoscopically concerning for melanoma. Are there additional dermoscopic clues that can, uh, that can let us know that the lesion we're looking at may be congenital in origin? We'll take a closer look at four. These have been proposed to be target network, target globules, milli-like cysts, and perifollicular pigment changes. Target network is defined as either a brown dot or globule or a dotted vessel that's uh, present in the center of the hypopigmented hole of the network. Let's look at a, another example here. Here we see network, and you can see, uh, as indicated in the arrows, either a brown dot or globule whose presence is right in the center of that hypopigmented hole. Another example of a lesion, 
we see network throughout the lesion and in the center of the lesion, in the center of the holes of the network, we see brown dots and globules. Published example, on the left we see target network with brown dots. On the right we see target network with dotted vessels. Target globules, these are not universally accepted uh, structures. They have been proposed to suggest that a lesion is congenital in origin. People have suggested they're larger globules that are centered by a smaller and darker globule. Let's look at some examples. Here is indicated in the arrows, you see a brownish globule, and you can see that it's surrounded by a hypopigmented brownish larger roundish structure, target globule. Another example, we see brown globules and we see it's surrounded by a hypopigmented brownish larger roundish structure. What about milialic cysts? Obviously milialic cysts are seen most frequently in seborrheic keratosis. They can be seen in nevi. When you do see them in nevi, it does suggest a congenital origin. Another example, congenital nevus, we can see a few milialic cysts present. Finally, terminal hairs and perifollicular pigment changes. Terminal hairs, we see thickened, darker hairs present in congenital nevi. And perifollicularly, we can see pigment changes. That can be hyperpigmentation, hypopigmentation, or a combination of both hyper and hypopigmentation. Another example of thickened, darker terminal hairs and perifollicular hypopigmentation. When melanoma does occur, which is rare in small and medium congenital nevi, it almost always occurs after puberty. It frequently arises at the edge of the congenital nevus, and it starts at the DE junction. So it arises as a very superficial melanoma. This is very different from large and giant congenital nevi. What this suggests, though, is that dermoscopy is the perfect tool for identifying early melanomas arising in small congenital nevi. Thank you for your attention.